Okay, everybody, I am live. So uh, doing, I'm hopefully streaming to both YouTube and Facebook. This is the first time I'm doing both of them. So please, I apologize for any uh, mishaps and my audio is working, so that's good. Uh, so today I'm really excited, this evening I should say, it's 7.20 p.m. and um, I wanna make uh, a healthy dish. Uh, Italian food, we often think of pastas and stuff like that. Um, but actually a lot of Italian food and a lot of Italian cooking is using fresh vegetables. And that's really, really key because you want good fresh vegetables to get a lot of flavor and cauliflower, you might be thinking, yeah, who's gonna make that taste good? Well, guess what, the Italians do. So I have a recipe here that I'm gonna show you. Very, very easy, we're gonna um, cook the cauliflower, then we're gonna season it with some breadcrumbs. I'm gonna show you how to make them really easy. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is, cut the cauliflower and if you see me looking over like this it's because i'm looking at my computer just to make sure i'm not missing anything and we don't need the green leaves and what we're going to do is behind me i have some water it's already boiling and i'm going to boil the cauliflower and instead of boiling it in large chunks because um, we have to boil it for about 10, 15, 20 minutes, uh, we wanna cut that down. So the way that I'm doing that is you want to just simply cut into the little florets and you don't have to worry about getting it perfect. I certainly don't. And if you have any stems that are really thick like this, don't toss it, we can still use it. And just simply cut it up. And I don't want this to, evaporate, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Uh, all right, and just grab a bowl, and we're going to put this in there. And I'm using fresh cauliflower. I also have cauliflower in the freezer. Um, if I didn't have fresh and I wanted to make this, I would just simply thaw the cauliflower and do it. I'm not very picky. Don't think you have to be. So just the little florets about this size. Um, hopefully you can see it. Let me, I'm gonna test changing my camera view here so you can see. There we go, yay, working. So just little florets like this. Okay, no big deal. And we're back. It's kind of exciting. All right. Yes, so you can definitely freeze cauliflower. Um, we have done that many times. Um, I mean, why toss it and waste it? So if you don't think you're going to get to it, then, you know, cut it up. If you want to blanch it, go ahead. I don't usually. Okay, so what I was going to say earlier was that by cutting these smaller, um, little bad spot there, uh, it cuts down the boiling time. So we only have to boil the cauliflower for about five minutes. Two to five, three to five minutes, I would say. And that is very nice, a nice shortcut here. So we're going to put it all in a pan, or, well, not a pan. We're going to put it in um, a uh, baking dish. But you want the baking dish to have low size, if you can. Um, that way it will be more likely to roast, kind of be more like a roast, where it would really be able to kind of crisp up the sides and stuff. And let's see here. So, I'm going to keep cutting, cutting that up, and we'll be done here in a minute. So I want to talk about the breadcrumbs because the breadcrumbs are really, really key to this recipe. Um, I like to make our own breadcrumbs uh, for a couple of reasons. One, we are really big into organic, and I have yet to find any organic brand of breadcrumbs. And when you look at the ingredients, it has everything that you really don't want. So... I have started to make our own breadcrumbs for many years, and it is much easier than you would think. Um, and in fact, with this recipe, 
you don't even need prepared breadcrumbs like ones that have been you know how you're supposed to take the stale bread and all that kind of stuff and you don't need that we're going to use actually i have a bag here of pieces of italian bread that um just was in the fridge we never used kind of fell apart and we just keep it for whatever reason and this is a perfect recipe to use that for so i'm not gonna do that over there all right almost done here and you can see a lot of times you can also just well of course it's not doing it for me now but you can just break them off like that but i don't know just easier to cut it up i mean this whole recipe takes well with the cooking time about 25 minutes probably about 30 minutes but most of that is simply the baking and what's thing that's really great about this recipe is that here you go see how easily it breaks apart that's really nice that's helpful yeah um is that it's really you can be really flexible with the quantities so i mean i'll tell you approximations of what i am using and uh you can go with that i mean for my recipe printed recipe that's on my website um i'll give you exact measurements just to kind of give you a base but i mean oh my gosh you can do whatever all right and i am gonna cut this because i don't want this to go to bed the waste and for the core, I'm just simply cutting it really small just to help it cook a, cook a little bit. I mean, because remember, after we boil it, we're going to actually bake it. So, okay, great. Done. Got that done. Okay. So, just pour this into the water. Voila. And we're going to do that for about, I'm going to do four minutes. So next, while that is going doing its thing and boiling, we are going to make the breadcrumb mixture. And you can actually use the same bowl that you were using to for the cauliflower. Okay, so to make our own, um, yes, you can definitely use store-bought breadcrumbs. It'll save you a step, and that's great. But like I said, we don't do that here because we can't find organic and um, I don't know. It's just, you buy it at the store and unless you really like the seasonings that they put in it, you know, we're making a very simple one and I'm just putting in, this is fresh bread, I haven't toasted it. I'm just gonna put it all in here, just to save all the crumbs. And I'm putting it in my Nutribullet here. I'm going to pulse it, and hopefully it won't be loud on here. Let's see here, Turn the power on. I'm just going to pulse it. Oops, I'm going to. I see. I'm going to mute this while I do this. Okay, I just wanted to get that one other piece of bread. This Nutra Bullet is really, really nice. It's kind of a mix between the Magic Bullet and a blender. It comes in really handy for stuff like that. All right, so how much do I have here? I have about two cups. That'll be good. And I'm gonna get all that out. And you can see this makes really good crumbs. And we are done with this. Okay. So what next do we want to add? We want to add a little bit of garlic. Now, this is a recipe where a little bit of garlic goes a long way. So I have a rather large piece of garlic. So this is going to be garlicky. But um, if you're not a big fan of garlic, I am, then uh, just use a small clove. But you do want a little bit of that flavor. Okay. 
Okay. And then just go ahead and we're going to slice it, um, cut it up really small. Uh, kind of like dicing it, Eat, not necessarily mincing it, but into small pieces. Okay. And just add that in. Uh, now we're going to add in some Romano cheese. Now let's talk about the cheese. Do you have to use Romano cheese? The answer is no. You can use Parmesan. Um, you can also use, if you want more of a creamy type, you can use a creamier cheese like provolone. Um, so, you know, you don't have to be real picky with this recipe. So I'm going to put in about, I don't know, I think I'll do about a quarter of a cup. It's about three tablespoons. I'm going to do a little bit more. Perfect. And some black pepper. Totally optional. You don't have to do it. I used to hate black pepper. Blech, black pepper. It's just grown on me, I guess. I don't know. I just started liking it. I think that happens when you get older. You just start. I don't know. Your tastes change. Oh, and that reminds me. Okay, so that's done. Uh, we're going to set your oven. And I have a Breville Smart Oven Pro, which is great. I love it. Um, I don't have to heat up this whole oven here just to do a dish like this. Okay, so I'm going to clear a little space here. I'm not done with the breadcrumbs. I just want to get the cauliflower um, out of the water and rinse it a little bit because um, I don't want it steaming hot when I touch it. So uh, let me get a... Calendar in a bowl, turn this off. That looks good. Okay. And I'm just going to run some cold water on it just to help kind of cool it down a little bit, which I recommend you doing. Okay, good. And then let it drain. Let's get some of that excess water out, and I'll tell you why later. All right, so we're not done with this yet. We don't have the breadcrumb mixture done yet because we got to add some parsley. You can use dried Italian or dried parsley, Italian parsley. I grow fresh um, Italian parsley using a hydroponic um, container thing. It's really cool. So I have. Italian parsley. So you want, you know, a few tablespoons. And you just want to chop it up. And, you know, if you don't have fresh, you can, um, you can use dried. That's fine. And in terms of like other herbs that you can add, I really haven't given it much thought. When I do breadcrumb mixtures, uh, you know, this is just kind of the way I was taught. And so this is the way that I do it. And I'm happy with it. It works every time. So, and just chop it up. But yeah, having that hydroponic system down in our basement, it's just a, like a tabletop type. And it's like great. I mean, it's, well, I was gonna say it's in the winter time right now, but it's not. It's actually what, three days into spring. And I have fresh Italian parsley. I mean, really. So, all right, and so I'm adding that into the breadcrumb mixture. I think that's everything. So what we've just done here is we have gone ahead and made our own breadcrumb mixture and not have to worry about what we get from the store and all the junk that they put in it. And guess what? It's going to taste better. It's going to taste, taste a lot better. All right, so I got to move this out of here. And let me move this out of the way. All right, this is like, I tell you, one thing about cauliflower that really stinks is when you cut it, it goes flying all over the place. So I'll probably have to vacuum later, but hey, it's worth it. For a good meal, it is worth it. All right, so moving along. All right, so there's another ingredient I didn't tell you about. 
and that is olive oil. So um, having a good olive oil helps. I'm using extra virgin. And the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of coat the bottom and just put in um, drizzle there. This is easy to the touch, so that's great. That's still preheating, so I still have a little bit of time. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add this in. And we are now done with this. Put this in our sink. And I'm just going to use a spoon here. You can use your hands if you want. It doesn't matter to me. So what I'm doing first is I put the olive oil on the bottom, but I really want to mix it up because I want to get that olive oil over, like on top of all the cauliflower. It just helps with the flavor, helps distribute it, right? And this is a good... This is a really good side dish to have. I think it would go really well with some meat dishes. Um, but if you're the type of person, oh good, that's done. If you're the type of person that just likes to eat vegetables and as a main meal um, and is satisfied with that, then this is one of those recipes that is really good. Um, all right, so I was gonna say something else and I forgot what it is. Uh, no, okay. so. Simply just pour this on. Oh, I know what it was. It was um, this recipe for people who, I mean, it just seems like I'm meeting more and more people who are either vegan or they have like dairy restrictions. And so it's like, ah, oh, I want to tell them about my recipes, like family members and stuff, but I'm not going to do them any good because they can't have it. This is one of those recipes, let me dump it all in, um, where you can substitute the, um, the the cheese, the Romano cheese, with some vegan cheese. So if you're making it for family members that have those type of restrictions, um, I've had dairy-free vegan Parmesan cheese, and it was pretty good. Um, so I actually think it would be good for this dish. Okay, so I'm just going to move this around. Probably a little bit more breadcrumbs than I really needed, but... All right, so then what we're going to do, we don't just want to put it in the oven. We actually want to drizzle olive oil on here because what that's going to do is help the breadcrumbs to really crisp up. So apply it liberally, and I just do it at a diagonal, going back and forth. And this is this particular brand, what brand is this, Atlas, um, you know, it has the spout here. And so it actually, it looks like I'm like... <laughs> pouring buckets on here, but I'm really not because it actually comes out pretty thin. So just eyeball it. And then what I do is, okay, so I went one direction. Now I'm going to go the other direction. And this is going to be so good. This, this is really good. So this was in the oven for um, 25 minutes, okay, at 375. You want to make sure that it's not too low in the oven. So have it like in the upper, not like broiling area or anything like that. You want to have it where those breadcrumbs are going to crisp up. Okay, so that's really, really key. So this is what it looks like. And I'm going to change it so you can see kind of a close up of it. Go. Ooh. So that's what it looks like. Hopefully you can see that there. Looks good. Smells already good. Haven't even baked it yet. All right, so this is going to go in my little toaster oven here. Uncovered, because we want it to crisp up. And let me just turn that back up to 25 minutes. So if anybody's thinking of getting one of these type of things, this is, is a little pricey, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I think it saved us money in the long run because I honestly don't remember the last time I used this sucker. Okay, so I'm not going to make you wait for 25 minutes because that would be absolutely really silly and I would probably run out of things to talk about. So what I did was I made a, um, made a batch earlier. And uh, the funny thing is, is that uh, my husband came down and he was like, hey, can I have some? I said, sure, thinking he would take a bite because thought I had said I needed it to show you guys. 
so anyway, uh, a bite turned into like barely any, <laughs> anything left. So I think that um, that just proves how good it actually is. Because he was like, yeah, he wasn't too sure about it. He's, you know, cauliflower, this and that. And um, he is like, I said, you left some for me, right? I'm like, I need it for when I go live. And he's like, um, yeah. <laughs> He left a little bit. So anyway, but long story short, um, hopefully you found that amusing. I did. It tastes really, really good. You want to serve it warm. I'm going to show you how good it is. I mean, obviously it's cooled down, but still really good. Um, I really hope you try this recipe. Like I said, I think it's going to go really well with meat, chicken recipes. Chicken cutlets, really good. Serve it with a salad or something like that on the side. So anyway, well, that's my live. Um, can't tell if anybody's viewing or if anybody has any questions or not. So, but I do hope you try this. Uh, when this um, video is done and I get to my computer and I put the actual details online, um, I will update the description. So I want to thank you for watching. If you like these type of recipes, make sure to sign up for my newsletter, uh, my email list. Get on my email list because I send out these type of recipes weekly, um, if not more. And I just love sharing recipes with you guys. So take care and grazie and ciao.